Welcome back. My name is Patrick Ryan. You might know me on the forum as Patrick Ryan. In the last video, we went through the inspector window. And in this one, we're going to jump right into scene properties. So let's do that now. Uh, what we have here is, as you saw in the video yesterday, uh, our standard sandbox. And as I click on things in the scene explorer, our properties will show up in the inspector window. So uh, once I click on scene, you can see we have quite a few controls over here in, this, in the inspector window. Uh, the first part, the rendering mode, is a way to debug our meshes. There are a lot of times when you have uh, a problem in the mesh that you might just need to see what's going on under the hood. Uh, so this is a, an easy way to, to debug the mesh. Uh, the first one in point mode, uh, what happens, and it's a little hard to see on the screen here, but we only render the vertices of the mesh. Uh, the next one is a little bit easier to see, which is the wireframe. So in this one, we connect all the, the vertices with the, with the wire. Uh, but the interesting thing here you'll notice is that we're still using the materials to color the wireframe. So you can see where the material breaks are on your mesh itself. And then these lines that you see in the background are the wireframe for the skybox, because the skybox that we use here is an actual mesh as well. And then going back to solid, you can see this is our standard view with our models, with the materials, and then the, the standard skybox in the background. Uh, in the next section here in environment, uh, we can control a, a bunch of things about the, the lighting and the environment itself. Uh, the first one here being clear color. Now clear color, you can see it's set to a blue, but we can't see blue in the scene. And the reason is that the skybox is actually sitting in front of the clear color. So to show you that, I'm gonna roll down the nodes here and click on our eyeball right next to the HDR skybox. And what that'll do is hide the skybox mesh. And now you can see the clear color. So let's change that to a lighter color like that. So it's a little easier to see everything. Uh, the next part here in ambient color, uh, that refers to specifically the materials that are on the mesh. So in Babylon, we have a couple of different types of materials that we can use on meshes. Uh, one of them being the standard material uh, and the other one being a PBR material. So in the standard material, it uses the ambient color to determine the light color that's on the objects. Uh, with a PBR material though, we don't pay attention to the ambient color at all. So if I make a change here, that's not going to affect these meshes. Um, with the What does affect the meshes for PBR is the environment texture. So you'll see if I turn off the IBL texture, uh, there's no more light on the model because there are no dynamic lights in the scene. Now you can see that uh, the clear color isn't affected by it at all. Uh, and even if I turn on the skybox, the skybox isn't affected by the environment light at all either. That Those are just images. But the models themselves, the PBR materials on the models, are affected by the IBL texture. Uh, the other thing I can do with the IBL texture is change the, the, the texture itself. So let's update the environment texture with this button. And what you see here is a couple of DDS textures. Uh, the DDS textures are pre-computed for our shader, and uh, the process of creating those is a little complicated and a little bit outside the scope of this video series. So we'll get back to that in a later tutorial. But I'll just grab the Studio Softbox and put it in here, and you can see the lighting has changed on the objects. Uh, the other part of it that I control is if I click on the Environment Texture link here, I'll get all of the properties for the environment texture itself. And then I can do things like uh, change the rotation on the light. So let's say I want to rotate the light over here. Uh, and that looks pretty good. So let's go back to the rest of the properties. Uh, the next part here is fog mode. Now, fog mode uh, simulates what you have in the real world atmospheric conditions where objects that are further away from you are more desaturated and uh, appear more of the fog color. So that tells us that it's far away. Uh, for this instance in computer rendering, uh, we can fake that fog mode to make it feel like things are further away. So let's turn that on. And when I turn it on, I'll change the color to a lighter green color here. So you can see the, the skybox is completely covered in the fog color because that, that's really far away from the camera. And, but as you see the, the polyhedrons as they go back in space, they get more and more of that color. And if I crank up the effect, you can see they'll actually disappear at some point. So it really does give you the sense that things are farther away from the camera. So let me turn that back off so it doesn't get in the way of the next section here, which is the image processing. Now image processing in this section uh, 
it refers specifically to image processing on materials themselves. So anything that doesn't have a material like clear color won't be affected by this image processing. And I'll, exp I'll show you that really quickly. Uh, if I just roll the exposure down here, everything gets darker, including the skybox. Uh, but if I turn off the skybox again, uh, you can see that the clear color isn't actually being affected by the image processing here. So that is only for material properties themselves. Uh, so let me turn this back on and we can go through the rest of the settings. Uh, so you have contrast and exposure up here, which are pretty self-explanatory. Tone mapping is a little bit more in depth, again, than we'll go into in this uh, video series, but just kind of a, a high level view of it. What it is, is if I turn on tone mapping, uh, what I'm doing is remapping the tones in my image. Uh, and what that's useful for is if you're using high dynamic range uh, images for your image-based lighting, uh, you have a wide range of tones and to keep the, the values of your render back uh, under control so that it doesn't get too hot and too blown out. Uh, we will switch over to the ACES uh, setting for tone mapping. Uh, and so just kind of like a high level takeaway that if you're using an HDR map that has high dynamic range in it, uh, you'll want to turn on tone mapping and switch over to the ACES tone mapping uh, to make sure that your, your render looks great. Uh, the next part here, vignette, is exactly what it sounds like. We can, we can add a vignette to the scene. So I'm going to turn that on, I'm going to turn the weight up a little bit, and then I'm going to change the field of view, and you can see that we can really close down the, the vignette. Uh, all of these controls here have a lot of uh, control over the, the size, the color, the position of the vignette, uh, and so you can see those all, they're pre all pretty self-explanatory when you start sliding them around. Um, and then the last part of the, the scene panel here is uh, we have the gravity. So anytime you're using physics on objects, uh, they'll all be affected by gravity. And so you can set the, the, the force of gravity here, whether it's uh, negative, which means they fall down, or you can make it positive and make things fall up because of uh, your specific scene. Uh, but that gives you complete control over the, the gravity setting. So that is base, the basic uh, scene parameters for, for the inspector. Uh, I, we hope that you're really enjoying the series. Uh, if you like this one, the next one we're going to go in, the next uh, uh, settings we're going to go into are camera properties. So um, we would love to see you back for that. And if you really are getting things out of this series and enjoying it, we would really appreciate a subscription or a follow on any social media of choice. Uh, we hope you learned something today and uh, we really appreciate having you here. Have a great day.